morning, Mason Nation. We're starting to finally see the fall weather come into Fairfax as week two of Mason Cable News begins. I'm Britta Bassis. And I'm Crystal Moore. Thanks for getting your morning started with us. So how was your weekend, Crystal? It was great. I went to Georgetown University to visit my friend. Oh, really? How was it? It was beautiful. Their campus is amazing, and I really loved everyone there. But, but it's nothing compared to nothing George Mason. Nothing compared to George Mason, who has a lot to celebrate this year after being named among the top 150 national universities in the United States. This ranking comes from a report issued by the U.S. News & World Report. U.S. News & World Report defines a national university as one that offers a wide range of undergraduate majors, masters, and doctrinal degrees. Many, like George Mason, place a strong emphasis on re research, says Mason news writer Robin Hernan. George Mason was not, not alone among university institutions to top the list. The University of Virginia, the College of William & Mary, and Virginia Tech also featured on the top of the 150 list. Mason senior Yvette Wegwright expressed her reaction to the news by stating it's an honor to hear that Mason was recognized for their efforts. Often you think our efforts go unnoticed, but it's amazing to hear we are a nationally ranked university. The categories of importance in order to meet the criteria to be considered for the top 150 include graduation retention rates, assessment by peers and counselors, faculty resources, financial resources, and alumni relations. Along with an honorable mention, George Mason was also ranked in the top 200 best universities globally by the academic ranking of world universities. And Forbes listed Mason among the top 200 on its top colleges. To read more about our national rankings, please check out usnews.com or gmu.edu. Thursday, September 5th, Parking Services suspended the sale of general parking permits for the first time ever in an attempt to contain the overwhelming demand for parking. The Director of Parking Services at Mason, Josh Cantor, explains that parking on campus is busier than it ever has been, even during the Rappahannock construction in 2007. High traffic contributed to the decision to stop selling general permits, but Cantor says there are other options for students. According to Cantor, a limited number of reserved permits for lots I and J and the Rappahannock and Shenandoah decks are available, but are more expensive options. He has been looking for a solution on being able to offer reasonable pricing options for passes while ensuring each student has a parking spot. Cantor says the two things people say to us are build more parking and make parking less expensive. Well, the more we build, the more expensive it is. Zone parking was developed as a more efficient way to use what the campus already has. In an attempt to ease the flow of traffic, Parking Services has implemented a number of ideas, including the encouragement of carpooling and the soon-to-be Park Me app for Lot K that is already in use at the Arlington campus. Parking Services does not receive any funding from the university at this time, and Cantor stresses, we are out here trying to serve the faculty, staff, and students. We can't control how many are necessarily here or at what time, but we are trying to give people the best information possible to help them make the best decisions. This year marks the 34th anniversary of the opening of Mason's Arlington campus. Mason originally began as a branch of the University of Virginia, only gaining independent university status in 1972 by an act of the Virginia General Assembly. Mason developed the concept of the distributed university not long after being established as an independent university by creating a network of campuses in Fairfax, Prince William, and Arlington, each with a specified academic focus. The Arlington campus, established in 1979, emphasizes law, policy, economics, conflict resolution, social work, nonprofit management, initiatives in educational transformation, and global studies. Mason's Arlington campus originally began as a dependent department store, but more, after more than 34 years of expansion, the 5.2-acre campus serves over 2,000 students per day. This summer, the students, faculty, and staff of the Arlington campus celebrated over three decades of its history by unveiling a photography exhibit in Founders Hall, featuring photos of the area through the years, says Buzz McLean, writer for Mason News. Bob Bay, a digital collections archivist in University Libraries Special Collections and Archives, spoke at the historic celebration about the growth of the Metropolitan Campus. I think it's important for students and all members of the community to understand their organization's history and how it has evolved over time, Bay said. It gives people an appreciation for a lot of hardworking people had to do to make this happen, to achieve having a campus in Arlington. The photography exhibit was a collective effort, but together, but together by the faculty and staff of the Arlington campus, university libraries, and creative services. The exhibit is open to the public and located on the first floor of Founders Hall. For any further information, please visit arlington.gmu.edu. 
GMU's own Academy Health Student Chapter won the National Academy Health Chapter of the Year Award. The Chapter of the Year Award recognizes exceptional student chapters dedicated to enriching the experience of students studying careers in healthcare. GMU's chapter received top honors from among 36 chapters nationwide. Victoria Duong, Mason's chapter president, says our aim is to expose students studying healthcare to different educational and professional opportunities in health research and health policy. The goal is to provide opportunities that complement students' academic studies with real-world exposure in the form of site visits and lecture series. Other prospects include career building events, webinars, lectures, and access to various health service organizations in the DMV area. The student chapter here at George Mason is open to any and all students interested in healthcare careers and research. For more information, visit the chapter's website at chhs.gmu.edu slash academyhealth or email the chapter at acadhealth at gmu.edu. Congratulations to them. Congratulations indeed. We'll be right back with your event rundown, show you some of the sororities you can be a part of, and tell you about an exciting development that sports broadcast hopefuls will want to be a part of at Mason. Today is pretty busy for Mason Cable Network because right after today's show, we'll be heading over to Dewberry Hall for Career Services Fashion Show as we bring it to you live right here so you can attend the, in the comfort of your living room or near your computer. The show titled You've Got the Fashion Event runs today from 12 to 12.30 as part of a series of events to prepare students for the job market. MC News will begin its coverage of the event starting at 11.45 running until 12.30. At the event, you'll also be able to attend to speak with potential employers. Stop by Dewberry Hall or stay tuned to be at the event. Need to unwind while doing something unique? The Center for Consciousness and Transformation is holding a Tai Chi and Qi Gong practice from noon until 12.45 today in the JC Dance Studio to be taught by Keith Harrington, an experienced teacher in the martial arts. Stop by the JC Dance Studio if you're interested today from noon until 12.45. Want to travel? Gain invaluable experiences? There will be an information session for anyone interested in studying abroad today from 3 to 4 in the JC Room 234. Hi, I'm Tyler Byron reporting for MC News. This past weekend, in agreement with Mason Cable Network's recent partnership with Mason Athletics, MCM brought you two exciting men's and women's soccer matchup. The first took place on Friday night when the men's soccer team took on the Pirates of Seton Hall which so happened to be Wingstock 2013, hosted by Hard Times Cafe. For a majority of the game, both teams played a similar style of offense until in the 60th minute when Tommy Mulgrew's corner kick got headed by Hugh Roberts, where the ball then found the foot of Julio Arjana and then proceeded into the goal, giving him his first goal of the season. This would be the lone goal of the night, which featured spectacular defensive plays on both ends. The team now still holds an undefeated record of 4-0-1 as they hit the road for a three-game road trip starting with in-state rival UVA. The women's soccer team was a different type of game on Saturday night as they played the Old Dominion Lady Monarchs. In the first half, both teams struggled to move the ball offensively besides Kelly Pizzengrilli's first goal of the season. The pace then picked up in the second half of the game as the Patriots then scored two more goals off of the leg of Liz Hodges and Karina Irizarry giving Mason the 3-0 victory. This was the second victory for the women's soccer team this season. Make sure to tune in to Mason Cable News this Thursday as I will preview the matchup of the week as the women's soccer team play host to the VCU Rams, which also can be seen on Mason Cable Network and on Patriot Vision on GoMason.com. Sorority recruitment begins this week with the fraternities currently well into their rush week. MC News gave you a look into the various fraternities and what they have to offer last week. This week, we're doing the same for the sororities. Take a look. Hi, my name's Teresa and I'm a Rogama. So for panelytic recruitment, during the process, you have Rogamas, which are girls who have disaffiliated from the six sororities to help you guys go through recruitment. And we're kind of like camp counselors. So we help with the back, all the back information going on, 
help make sure you're educated, helping you make your decisions. We're just there as an unbiased people to help you know what's going on so you're not all confused and lost. Like I was my first time because I was the first one to go to Greek in my family, so I had no idea what's going on. So if you are interested in going Panhellenic, you can go to masonpanhellenic.com or you can register at gmu.mycampusdirector.com slash register to get started and get emails and know what's going on and meet all the fabulous stories. I'm Rachel Grimacy. And I'm Sarah Bachelor. And we're from Zeta Tau Alpha. Last year, Zeta Tau Alpha won the four-star chapter of Excellence Award, which is the highest award you can earn as a Greek organization bestowed by returning sorority life at our annual standards of excellence award. And this past summer, our international office awarded us with the Crown Chapter Award, which means that we met all the criteria that they set for us. And they also awarded us with the Founders Club Award, which means that we raised over $10,000 for our philanthropy, which is breast cancer awareness and education. We have an amazing national organization, so if you're interested in looking that up, you can Google us. We have a national page. You can look and learn more about our philanthropy, our outstanding alumni, and really what we stand for in Zeta Tau Alpha. And you can find information on our chapter by looking us up on Twitter, which is Zeta Tau Alpha of GMU, and that's the same thing you look up to find us on Facebook. I'm Monica. I'm Kathleen. I'm Shannon. I'm Hope. concludes today's segment of Mason Cable News. I'm Crystal Moore. And I'm Britta Balsas. Thanks for tuning in and stay classy, GMU.